Hi, this is Daniel Williams from GameBuildingTools.com and in this short video I will show you how to launch a rocket into outer space using Krona SDK. We'll accomplish this by using physics, a couple of display objects, and the physics option of apply force. So before we dive into the code, let's go ahead and create our first project. I'm going to assume you already have Krona SDK installed. And if you do, great. If you don't, no problem. Just head over to chronolabs.com and install the SDK. Once you have installed it, let's go ahead and create our new project by clicking on New Project. And you can type in the project name of Rocket Launch. You can keep the template as blank. And then you can keep everything else as the default settings. Next, you'll click on the Next button to choose the location of your project folder. And once you have chosen a location, go ahead and click on Open in Editor. Once you have the main.lua file open, we can start coding. So below line 7, let's go ahead and start our code by requiring in the library physics. So we'll type in local physics equals require physics. And I do want to note that this tutorial is geared just for simple teaching lessons only. I'm not going to get into Composer or more advanced topics. I'm just going to focus on using a physics to launch an object north towards the sky. So after we've required in the library of physics, we'll type in physics.start to start physics. And then we'll create a variable called do launch and we'll set this to false do launch will let our app know, let our game know whether or not to move the rocket upwards. After this, we'll create a platform for our rocket to stand on. We'll type in local platform equals display dot new rect and that stands for new rectangle so we are creating a display object that is a rectangle and then we'll pass in some parameters. We'll pass in 0, comma 0 comma 100 comma 20. This stands for the XY location and then this 100 stands for the width and 20 stands for the height. After that we will position our platform more accurately by typing in platform.x equals 160 and platform.y equals 440. If we hit save and we look at our simulator, we will now see that there is a white rectangle towards the bottom of the simulator. The next thing we want to do is add a physics body to our platform. So we'll type in physics.addBody and we'll pass in the parameter of platform. We will make this a static object and we'll pass in a couple additional parameters and we'll set the friction of our body to zero and we will set the bounce to zero as well. So this is telling our game to make the display object platform a physics body, make it a static body type, set the friction to zero, and set the bounce to zero. After our platform, we need to add our rocket. And in this example, I'll be using a, dis a circle display object to represent our rocket. So we'll type in local rocket equals display dot new circle and we'll pass in some parameters of 0 comma 0 comma 20 which represents the x location, the y location, and the radius. Then we'll position our rocket a little bit more accurately by typing in rocket dot x equals 160 rocket dot y equals platform dot y minus 30 and this is telling our game to put the rocket above the platform. And finally, we also want to make our rocket a physics body type. So we'll type in physics.addBody. And we'll pass in the parameter of rocket. Now if we hit save, it looks like we have a typo here. So it looks like I typed in the word circle wrong. 
So I'll just correct this spelling real quick. Hit save. And now I can see that I have a platform and I also have a circle object representing my rockets. So going back to the code, the next thing I want to do is create a function to move the rocket. So I'll type in local function move rocket, close it up with the word end, and then I'll create a if then statement. If do launch, then, and close that if then statement up with the word end. This if then statement will only run if the variable do launch is true. So within this, I want to type rockets colon apply force. So whenever this function is called and when do launch is true, we will apply some force to our rocket object to push it upwards towards the sky. And to do this, we'll pass in the parameters of zero, comma, negative zero one, excuse me, negative zero point one eight five. And then we'll type in rocket X and rocket dot Y. So this is the X force and this is the Y force and this is the X position and the Y position. So we are telling our game when this line runs, we will apply a negative Y force of negative 0.185 to the rocket's location. And this will essentially push the rocket upwards towards the top of the simulator or towards the sky. After the function move rocket, we need to create a another function that responds to the touch event of the launch button. So we'll hit enter a few more times, type a local function, launch, touch, and we'll pass in the parameter of event, and we'll close that function up with the word end. So again, this function will run whenever the launch button, which we haven't created yet, is touched. And the launch touch function accepts the parameter of event. And within this function, we'll create a if then statement and close that if then statement with the word end. Inside that if then statement, we want to check when the event dot phase is in the began phase. And we'll do that by typing event dot phase to equal signs and then within double quotes the word began. So this if then statement will occur whenever the event dot phase is in the began phase. If it is, we will set the variable do launch to true. And then we will create another else if statement to set the do launch variable back to false. So within this check, within this condition, we want to type in event dot phase equals ended or event dot phase equals canceled. And if this is true, we'll type in do launch equals false. So this else if statement checks to see if the phase is in ended or canceled. The touch events are outside the scope of this tutorial, but just as a high level overview, there are different phases that are passed into the touch event variable here, and the phases represent different states of the touch event. If it's in begin, that means the player has initiated contact with a display object. If the phase is in ended, that means the player has stopped interacting with the object. And if the phase is canceled, that means there was an interruption with the touch event towards that object. So in the case of event.phase is began, we will set do launch to true. In the case of event.phase is ended or canceled, we'll set do launch to false. So essentially we are saying whenever the player is touching the launch button, go ahead and set do launch to true. Otherwise, we will set do launch to false. So after our function launch touch, we will create a button object that will allow the player to press something to launch the rocket up towards the sky. So we'll do that by typing local launch 
button equals display dot new circle and we'll pass in the parameters of 0 comma 0 comma 20 and we'll position our launch button by typing in launch button dot x equals 290 launch button dot y equals 450 we want to change the color of our launch button to something that's green so we'll type in launch button colon set fill color to green and then finally we will actually add an event listener to our launch button that will call the launch touch function so we'll type in launch button add event listener and we'll pass in two parameters the first parameter is the touch to tell what event that we're listening for and the name of the function if we hit save relaunch the simulator you'll see that we have our launch button in the green in the bottom right corner and right now if we press it nothing actually happens because we still have to add one more line of code so after the event listener hit enter a few more times and we'll type in runtime colon add event listener and we'll pass in enter frame and the function move rockets this line tells Chrono to run this function on every frame within our game and this function happens to be move rocket so move rocket will be occurring every single frame and it will check to see whether or not do launch is true if it's true apply the force if it's false don't do anything so now if we hit save and we relaunch the simulator and now if we press the green launch button you will see the white circle go towards the top of the sky and that's it that's it's super simple to launch a rocket towards space using Cronin SDK if you would like to see a written version of this tutorial, head over to GameBuildingTools.com and check out the category Corona SDK Tutorials. I have a written out version of this tutorial and I also have more that you may be interested in. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.